Welcome to Financial Headwinds, a report by RWK Goodman, where we explore the state of the banking and finance industry today. We wanted to understand what kind of impact political and economic issues were having across the real estate market, from residential property to commercial real estate and property development. I mean, looking at, at Brexit, the war in Ukraine, and you could probably throw on top of that, COVID, um, certainly not been easy for, for house builders and developers of late. Um, if I look at the, the current political challenges um, or, or economic challenges, um, probably topping top them right, right now, um, high inflation, rising interest rates, um, seeing a slow down the economy, an increased number of contractor failures, house price falls, um, which also resulted in chains collapsing and therefore developers being unable to exit um, from their schemes. Um, and in terms of, of kind of other political headwinds, um, the sort of planning landscape is also particularly challenging as well at the minute. So, so I think all, all kind of thrown together, um, you probably wouldn't be waking up now, um, I think, to be a new entrant to the house building and development marketplace. I guess we are, we are concerned, um, but but actually how far it goes, we don't think it'll be any more than low double digit figures. Um, so we're perhaps give or take halfway through um, that, that cycle. Um, but again, it'll be very much dependent on, on what's being built and where it's back, whereabouts it's being built. I think probably the biggest surprise to me so far has been, we haven't seen huge evidence of yield shift yet. And in a market where interest rates have gone from 10 basis points to 525 basis points, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, I think properties will um, deteriorate in value. Um, you know, I think there will be uh, some bargains to be had across the market. Uh, across all asset classes. So I think we're in for some tough times in terms of capital values. We asked for our contributors' opinions on their predictions for the property market in 2024. Opinions on the level of price correction we'll see and the factors involved varied. I think it's definitely been a, a tough time for the industry at the moment with rising interest rates uh, and cost of living increasing. Um, I think for renters, obviously rental prices have gone up quite dramatically over the last 12 months, along with energy bills, etc. cetera. Um, this is leading mainly to, you know, high levels of fault on renters, which is leading then to uh, investors' portfolios being uh, a bit more difficult and a bit more stress tested, um, which is then leading to people maybe a bit more wary of buying. So I think generally we're seeing a bit of a slowdown in, the, in people buying new opportunities, um, which, which overall will lead to probably some price correction, I would imagine, over the next 12 months. So, so I don't think there's, there's a set answer um, for this. I think what we've seen so far is, it, is it's very much location, so geography specific, as well as property type specific. Um, we, we lend across England and Wales, and I've got parts of the country where we've undoubtedly seen a, a fall so far up to about 5% on, on some property types. Um, but actually, I've got other parts of the country where we are still seeing incredibly strong demand and actually price is still beginning to ease up, but still much higher than, than, than a red book valuation would have been, uh, which was instructed kind of a, you know, 12 months or so back. Uh, the knock on impact on debt and lenders that want to play the loan to value breach card is going to heat up. Um, so I'm quite bearish. I think, uh, I think we've got some troubling times ahead. Most agreed that a return to the subprime crisis of the early 2000s was not on the cards. Well, I think, I think generally banks are, are better well capitalised than they were pre-2008. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulation about the amount of capital that banks have to hold. Um, and regarding the stress testing of mortgages or, or on the, the residential side. Um, so uh, I, I, I don't think so. I think we'll be in a better position this time. And I, I actually see with we've had quite a significant shock to the market with interest rates rising so significantly in quite a short amount of time. And, and actually, relative to that, the market's held up pretty well in terms of where prices have gone and, and where defaults have gone. There's still a lag between reality and what's actually happening. And it's great, you know, you talk to the valuers um, and, you know, the valuers will give you information and comps based on a bit of a backward looking set, data set. Um, 
So, you know, things like, as I mentioned earlier, um, yields and cap rates, you know, it, they can only give you information based on transactions that have happened. And, you know, I just can't quite see how cap rates haven't widened significantly, uh, given like the, the risk-free uh, rate uh, in terms of, you know, put your money in the bank now, you get 6%. Uh, you put your money in the bank two years ago, you'd get nothing. Um, and that has to that has to play through the system, um, and have an impact on uh, real estate values. Well, it makes buy to let less attractive. Indeed, indeed. Leo Del Rosso shares his predictions on the role bridging finance will play in the industry moving forwards. I think bridging, especially um, since two thousand eight, has become a lot more mainstream. Uh, there's a, been an explosion of new lenders, new entrants into the market. Um, CA was obviously one of the original bridging lenders out there, um, but it's definitely become a lot more mainstream. In the, in the next 12 months, I see it increasing. Um, I see where there is maybe some pressures in the market. Actually, for investors, that's a great opportunity. Uh, and often they'll use bridging finance to facilitate those opportunities because it means they can move quickly in a scenario and to buy a property or to refinance something. and take advantage of that speed. So um, yeah, I, th I definitely see actually a, probably an increase in, in bridging finance volumes over the next 12 months or so. How do our contributors expect the real estate market to evolve? Read our financial headwinds report to find out. <laughs>